The goal of creating a homeland for Jews seemed like a noble pursuit in 1897 when the Zionist movement became officially established. However, their dream of returning to Palestine has become a nightmare of violence, and there is no end in sight. Worse yet, the concept that Palestine is their homeland has turned out to be a tragic mistake. These white-skinned Ashkenazi Jews are not descendants of the original Jews of Palestine. There were no white people in Africa or Palestine 2,000 years ago. The medieval Europeans assumed that Jesus Christ, his mother, and the other original Jews looked just like the Europeans, which is why you can find Jesus with blue eyes and green eyes, and why his mother has such white skin. A Jewish historian looked into the ancestry of the Ashkenazi Jews and wrote the 13th tribe to show that their homeland is the area near the Caspian Sea. The mainstream media is ignoring this information. Most of the alternative media is also ignoring it. Your best source of information is the French Connection at IamTheWitness.com. Here are some excerpts from an interview about the 13th tribe. One of the, the subjects that I have been uh, actually pounding pretty hard on the radio about is this new book. Uh, well, it's not a new book, but to me it was quite new. Uh, most of these subjects are new to me. Uh, it's a book called The Thirteenth Tribe by a man named Kostler, and it was written some time ago. However, it is still, to date, I think probably the strongest evidence we've got uh, of some of the deceptions around you know, the, the, the Zionist camp, how they are going out into the air, uh, you know, airwaves and into the, to the newspapers, creating uh, false charges of anti-Semitism, ca causing uh, people to believe that uh, they are, in fact, the rightful heirs to Israel uh, and many other things. And so I've invited someone from Britain. His name is Mohammed uh, Refik, and he has been involved in trying to get the truth out about this stuff for over uh, a decade and a half, going on two decades now, which is amazing because, you know, this is back in the day when nobody was talking about this or very few people. And, and I think the first thing I'd like to start out with is how this Khazarian uh, empire uh, was born, and because the, the listeners may, they already know that ca the Khazars are the forerunners to the Ashkenazi sect of Judaism. So since you've done the study, wh where did the Khazar um, dynasty begin, and, and how did it get underway? What actually happened was, somewhere uh, between the 7th and 8th centuries of the Christian era, um, we find these Khazars who live um, in the area which was named after them, Khazaria, uh, which is the land locked between the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea. The northern border of this land um, is actually the third range of mountains. Between, If you were to start heading north from the south, you'll find there's actually three ranges of mountains, and the third one being the Caucasus up there, just yep. north of which is where modern-day Chechnya and Ingushetia are. Okay. Um, and to the south, you would find the main trade route that came out through Persia across northern Iraq, northern Syria, and into Turkey. Um, the, the, this was a, a common... Is that the current, present Kurdish, Kurdistan region? It Don't we have include, a lot of Kurds in that area? It would include Kurdistan and possibly Azerbaijan, and slightly out to the north, even would stretch up to um, southern Armenia. All and he does that, provide a pretty decent map in, on the website, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to follow along, you could go to uh, the, the French Connection website. The book is available on the site, and you'd be able to see the map uh, that Mohammed is referring to. Now, the, the, the fact that it's between, the, 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 the land of the Khazars is, is, as you go over the first range of mountains and drop down, their empire stretched from the north side of the first range of mountains all the way to the south side of the third. This area is uh, modern-day Georgia. There was a lot of the land in, in modern-day Georgia. And what's important about it is that because they, they basically had a range of mountains to the north, a range to the south, seas on the east and the west, 
they remained stable there for a very long time. And it was around this, the, the 7th and 8th centuries that they found themselves for the first time facing a difficult situation in that the Byzantine Empire, uh, which was modern-day Turkey, was um, trying to stop the expanding Muslim Empire coming out of Arabia, which it had already reached up through uh, Palestine and into Syria and obviously out into... And he Iraq. refers to it as the Caliphs. The, that was, the, the Caliph um, is the leader. He's the, the Muslim leader. Right, and he said that the Caliphs from the south were uh, making many, many for, um, uh, attacks over the, over the many centuries into his southern flank. That's correct. Over 80%, some say as much as 90%, so I will settle on 85 if that's okay with you tonight. Okay, yeah. 85% of world Jewry today are Ashkenazi. This is not small stuff. We're saying the majority of Jews in the world today, people who are called Jews, are Ashkenazi. And coming back to your point earlier, Darrell, the Ashkenazi... Um, started looking at Judaism, not so much with the emphasis on the Torah, but looking more to the Talmud. But these people are not the House of Israel. They are not the contracting party. That's the term in law. They were not a contracting party. At a time that God, according to the biblical chronology, made that gift, those people were living under the Hittite Empire. So I have as much claim as, as these people do uh, to Israeli real estate. And, and m w w what more, how can we have the so-called right of return? Darrell, surely, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I consider myself fairly educated, but I thought to return to somewhere, you have to go there first and leave. These people are returning to a place they've never been to. 